Hello everyone, welcome to AI Anytime channel. In this video, we are going to talk about Mate Gemini. So Mate Gemini is a new multimodal model by Google. You know, so Google at, and DeepMind at Google, they have come up with this new model that's called Mate Gemini, which has been, you know, uh, Gemini has been their earlier model that you saw, Gemini Pro, Ultra, blah, blah, blah. Now they came up with Mid Gemini, which is for medical domain right now. Uh, impressive, you know, benchmarks, guys. You know, they have performed really well on different evaluation benchmarks. They have surpassed, uh, you know, on all the benchmarks when it comes to uh, GPT-4 like models. Okay, and we're going to talk about that in a bit. And the research paper, <laughs> 58 pages, you know, and 53 authors. Google has, by the way, fired their entire Python, Flutter, Dart, I don't know what, how many teams that they have fired recently, but I don't want to go into those things because they say they are cost cutting, they are going to, uh, these fired people will upskill, you know, the developers or whoever sitting in Munich. Ridiculous thing, you know, by Google. Completely a ridiculous action taken by Google on this. They have fired their entire Python team. That's why they are struggling, by the way, in my sense, right? They already... Uh, a year or two behind when you see OpenAI and other competitors. If any organization today comes up with a model that surpassed GPT-4 has no value in my sense because GPT-4 was released a year back. So OpenAI is already a year ahead because they can launch GPT-5 anytime that will blown away all these models. Nobody will use it to be honest. So I'm, I'm, I'm really critical on these kind of models. Made Gemini is again a closed source model. Okay, so uh, as of now, I mean, I'm not sure, okay, that if they're going to make this open source, because open source thingy, they're calling it Gemma, not probably Gemini, but so that's a very, you know, that's that's a thing to debate, but GPT-4 has set the benchmarks really high, guys, you know, they have set the bar really high, every model comes in today and they compare that with GPT-4, just see how good they are, by the way, so unnecessary hitting open AI is not required, right? OpenAI will not even bother about it. You will be wasting your time criticizing them. Now, coming back to capabilities of Gemini models in medicine, if you look at here on my screen, they have performed really well on different benchmarks. And we're going to talk about that MedQA and, you know, uh, other uh, benchmarks that we have. And they have performed really well. They are now SOTA models on these benchmarks, state-of-the-art models. And I myself has great interest in medical domain. I have been working on... Uh, some products in the field and it's good it's good to perform well on leaderboards but the challenges is not when you come up with the best model the challenges is different in healthcare industry you have to be HIPAA compliant you have to be SOC 2 you have to be you know different others compliance that you have to uh, uh, you know in order to do business or build products you have to follow all of this and you have to be compliant that's a very big challenge uh, and if you look at this research paper, I have some findings. Okay. They call it that they have surpassed all the performance of GPT-4 models in every benchmark. And they also say that it's an advanced clinical reasoning. So it's multimodal in nature. So it supports images. It supports video. Let me open this quickly here. Now, if you look at this, you can look at an instruction over here. It says you are, let me just make it a bit bigger. So you can read the first one. It says, you are a helpful medical assistant. The following are questions about medical knowledge. So they have some instructions. What does the wall of the artery show with protein deposition and inflammation? So response is a circumferential bright pink areas of necrosis. So it's got, it got that. So it has visual QA on this data set, slick VQA. Again, a visual question, then close ended visual where you are looking at an external like a skin digits. And you can see some MTQs have been there. You know, some medical imaging like CT scans, X-rays, very, very dangerous to be honest. We have to be very careful with this kind of thing, text report generation, blah, blah, blah. So they have given us a few snapshots to kind of look at the baselining and then take it from there. That's their uh, different data sets that they have baselined on. Then they have this development, they say how they have developed made Gemini. So they have taken Gemini as the foundational model and then they have uh inherited capabilities from gemini ultra or gemini pro whatever and then medical specialization so they self-trained with wave search integration fine-tuning on different data sets of medical domain like 
PubMed Central and different medical imaging data sets by Stanford and things like that. And then I have chain of reasoning prompting and then they created Medgemini. So Medgemini is like a downstream model, you will say, fine-tuned and specialized for medical domain based on Gemini, word, Gemini model. And that's what they have given. Now, if you come back here, you know, there's uh, 58 pages, uh, a lot of examples. If you scroll down, they've given a lot of examples. And if you look at after 34 pages, they have references, they have different things. But I have on my notes here, you know, that it's very good for multimodal that they say and long context. Now, I'll tell you where long context can be helpful. If you look at North America, right, or most of the Western countries also in Europe or anywhere else, they follow so the clinicians follow an ehr system they have to uh, work with an ehr system electronic health records or emr emr systems electronic medical records now these ehrs are really uh when the, they store the data and once you fetch the data which are really uh lengthy for a given patient and it can be really unstructured now imagine 20 years old patient data sitting sitting in an ehr system and if you want to build uh, a tool that can bring up the ehr data and you use large language model of course with some other orchestrations and other add-ons to basically generate insights you know so if, in, in, if you look at in healthcare in us uh a lot of organizations are doing it you know medical notes clinical notes you know uh, summarizations and things like that so they they say that they have done that on they have baselined this on ehr system as well ehrs like epic uh Cerner, uh there are a lot of EHRs, Intel, Athena, and blah, blah, blah. So they have tried this out on medical documents, unstructured data coming from different EHRs and things like that. Now, in the real world utility, as I said, right, they have performed well on summarizing medical texts and generating referral, referral letters, you know, from notes and whatnot. Okay. Where it, they also say that they have outperformed human experts. Okay. So I, I, I completely aligned, you know, when it comes to these kind of huge cases where you have unstructured data and finding out some key insights like chief complaints and considerations medications which are there in the sitting in the ehr systems but diagnosis is something that we should be a bit aware you know we should not go into diagnosis with this kind of llms even they have performed well on med qa 90 odd percent on med qa is huge they say that they're their benchmark is 91.9, 91.1% on med QA. So this is really huge. Uh, they say it can be tailored to novel medical modalities. And they have, they, they say that they can, you can use customized encoders. So you can enhance the performance on a specialist task in the medical domain. That's what it also supports. Medical education, you can help you with uh, medical education, uh, edutech, dialogues, you know, the researchers sitting in some uh, schools, medical schools, they can use this kind of model to perform well. Also, the most important thing is, guys, that they also have mentioned clearly that if you want to use Medgemini in the real clinical settings, do that with, you know, extra validations or be really careful. Do not take this and start building products and start using it. If, that never happens like that. I've been in this field. I've been working on my own product uh, in healthcare. And let me tell you that it's extremely dangerous. You have to be really compliant with whatever I said. And you have to work with physicians to take their feedbacks and build systems. It's not about building a rag and to retrieve some information. It, it doesn't make sense, right? So these are some of the insights that they have said. They have, you know, we have, we have found it out from this document. But let's do not go into uh directly into the benchmark as benchmark sometimes can be really a hoax people can uh over tune the model and uh, uh train it more on the evaluation data sets and you will mostly will perform well right the, the real challenges is when you s try this on something that model has never seen it in the training phase that's most important so the huge cases if you want to do it referral letters clinical data summarizations clinical notes generations and things like that but when you take this for medical imaging be a bit careful guys you know for looking at a ct scan and telling okay there is a there is a chance of having a spider web or there's something wrong with pneumonia or a brain tumor blah 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 right that's very critical i will not suggest even to do that okay of now so uh, that's a different technology altogether you know you have to work with different deep learning models to kind of create something from scratch uh, on large samples of data better annotations coming in in that phase so those are different thing but if you want to do it for data summarization you have 
you know, a lot of unstructured patient data. How can you basically uh, use PII because you have to really uh, sanitize or redact personal identifiable information and then use these kind of LLMs like Midgemini to perform those huge cases. So I'll recommend you try it out. You try uh, clinical data summarizations, you try uh, clinical notes generation and you try these kind of huge cases. But uh, for whatever you do, always work with physicians take their feedbacks and then build a system you cannot build a system in a week or a month right it takes time if you're working on a product so i'm very excited guys for testing this out gemini models i will create few videos again uh, when i build some applications with this model and uh, again we'll post it on youtube and we'll take your feedbacks but if you have any thoughts feedbacks if you have your own findings please let me know in the comment box and you can also reach out to me through my social media channels Find those information on channel banner and channel about us. And if you like the content I'm creating, please hit the like icon. And if you haven't subscribed to the channel yet, please do subscribe to the channel. That helps me to create more such videos in the near future. Thank you so much for watching. See you in the next one.